Senator Joni Ernst, Iowa Republican and member of the Senate Armed Services Committee is in focus now. Senator, thank you for being with me. So how does, and I'm going to say it for the first time that I've said it, the Republican Senate nominee of Georgia, Herschel Walker, beat the incumbent, Raphael Warnock? Well, first, Harris, I, I do want to express my deepest condolences to those families in Texas. Uh, just a horrible, horrible tragedy that they are experiencing. Um, but we also, in other parts of the country, saw some amazing victories. And we did see this with Herschel Walker. You're right. He was the bright spot in Georgia. And what he can do and what other Republicans can do is really promote the conservative values that we have have and ways that we can get America back on track, tackling inflation, unleashing American energy potential, really taking on a strong leadership position around the globe. So we're deterring adversaries, not encouraging their bad behavior. So there are a number of things where we can show real strength when it comes to our voters this fall. And I think Republicans, including Herschel Walker, are going to have great sweeps come November. So we've got Brian Kemp, who's going to face Stacey Abrams again. And uh, I want to get your take on how he beats her again. But first of all, she appeared to twist herself into knots when talking uh. about voter turnout yesterday. Uh. Let's watch together. <laughs> the question about voter suppression and voter turnout is causation without correlation. We I'm sorry, you can make mistakes even when you know what you're talking about. It's correlation without causation. We know that increased turnout has nothing to do with suppression. Suppression is about whether or not you make it difficult for voters to access the ballot. And in Georgia, we know difficulty has been put in place for too many Georgians who want to vote by mail. So let me make it clear that in the three weeks of early voting, more than 850,000 ballots were cast. That's up 212 percent over the 2020 presidential primary race and a 168 percent increase over the 2018 gubernatorial primary contest. Uh, she says that those numbers don't matter. Why not? Oh, my goodness. Well, Harris, yeah, Stacey Abrams has this all wrong. Um, when you're saying there's voter suppression and yet we see increases year over year of voter turnout, um, she is promoting the big lie out there that we are trying to suppress votes all across the United States by making sure that our elections are secure. We have seen this even in Iowa, where we have strengthened voter security laws. And you know what? Voter turnout continues to go up. So Stacey Abrams is trying to promote a fallacy out there. She is lying to voters across the state of Georgia. And there's nothing to see here other than trying to make sure elections are secure. And I do hope we have strong voter turnout out there. I think it's important that people participate in the elections process. But again, she is trying to promote something that simply is not happening. Well, one thing is true. The whole nation will be watching again because those numbers in a primary are huge. Uh, they all right, are. Mm -hmm. let's talk the border. And I know you have a border bill, so I want to I want to hear all about the latest with that as well. The president's border crisis is raging out of control, Senator. We know this as a country. Um, it's it's bipartisan in the fact that we are all living through this. Axios is reporting as many as 50,000 illegal immigrants are waiting in Mexican shelters right now at the border. That's double their estimate from March. They are hoping to run out the clock as Title 42 eventually will come to an end so that they can get into our country. Axios also reports that up to 8,000 illegal immigrants per day are attempting to cross the southern border. So they're having those, those altercations with people in the water of the Rio Grande. I mean, we've seen it. Senator Ernst, I know you're proposing a measure called the Build It Act. It would allow any border state to complete the construction of a barrier using materials already bought by taxpayers for border wall construction. Give us the details. Right. Thank you, Harris. And God bless our CBP for all the wonderful yes. work that they are doing at our southern border. We have an issue. Here's part of the solution. It is my Build It Act. And it does allow states to apply for the unused portions of the southern border barrier uh, and erect their own uh, barriers. We know that states are initiating this. We've seen this in Arizona and Texas already. Why are we allowing all of these 
previously purchased materials just to waste away in the desert. President Biden had called this a waste of money when he was talking about the border wall. But what he has done is a true waste of money. What he has done is secure these contractors to watch over these unused supplies that are lying in the desert at a cost of upwards of $3 million a day. Senator, let me cut in. We're yes. paying people to babysit the stuff yes. that's just sitting that should be part of a wall? <laughs> Harris, I, exactly. $3 million per day. Oh Contractors to watch over these unused materials. I know. We went back and fact-checked that. And it is crazy. That is the waste of money. Let's go ahead and use those materials. They've already been purchased. And with the crisis we have at the southern border, this should be part of our solution. A hundred percent. I would, first of all, want to hear about, you know, how other senators who see it differently politically couldn't already get that because many of them live in states <laughs> right. where there's a border, where there's a wall, rather, like, well, former Senator Kamala Harris, who's now the vice president. Exactly. How do they get away with that? Like, they know <laughs> a wall works. Senator, we'll bring you back. Thank you so much. Good to Thanks, see you. Thanks, Harris. Thank you.